Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time, I'm going to be dealing with adversity, a tricky situation. I'm playing in the Tier 8 British, lightly armoured, sneaky tank destroyer, the Charioteer. And we are in a nasty game here. A Tier 10 game. Four Tier 10s on the enemy team, a handful of Tier 9s, but at least half of the enemy are Tier 8. So this matchup is not great, but it's not so much about the matchup. It's about the map that we are playing right now playing on Kharkov and this map is quite tricky for the charioteer in my opinion any map which is only 800 meters makes it more difficult to be able to engage your opponents at long range obviously because the map is smaller and so there's less opportunity and even uh, when the battle lines are drawn so close on Kharkov as they are you're usually only about 100 or 200 meters from your opponents and so that means playing sneaky is very tricky Ouch. Do you see what my health is on in the bottom corner? I was very lucky to survive that. I now have one hit point, and I'm also Amaract, as well as having used my repair kit this game, which means that I will be Amaract for the, for the rest of it. One minute into the game, one health, and Amaract, having to deal with tanks which are up to two tiers higher than you on a map which is not well suited to your vehicle. So, what do you do? Well... The whole point of this video is kind of the mindset between having a positive impact in your game and not. It might be a bit bold to say that some players would kind of give up on one health being Amaract, having to shoot it out with a full health uh, tier 10 German heavy tank on the enemy team. And those are the kind of players that are going to probably lose more games than they're going to win, or not win as many games as they could if they were stoic in the face of adversity and try to get through and just have the most positive impact they can no matter what the situation is. So in the charioteer, I, I'm Amarak so I've got a very low rate of fire. I've also got one hit point which means that a, a mouse could probably break wind near me and my tank would explode. So what do I want to do? Well I want to try and stay as hidden as possible. And now while Karkov might not allow you to have many long-range engagements. If I activate my camo net before I fire, hit this E75, or just as I do so, then I can still remain unspotted. Now, fair enough, my reload time is absolutely awful. I'm only doing 390 alpha damage with each one of these shots, but it feels like I might as well be firing some of the biggest caliber guns in the game with the kind of reload that the charioteer has right now. So an effect, a shot on the ST1 there would have been completely ineffective, and I waited until the E75 turned his turret so I could have a nice, easy shot into the side of the Tier 9 German heavy tank. The IS-7 appears, who spots me over the little ridge line. I tried to wait for a shot on the ST1, but I can't risk it. So I'm playing in a game with John Harmon, one of my good buddies. Hashtag blame John Harmon in the comments down below <laughs> and John's playing in the AMX 5100 which is a great support vehicle a bit like the charioteer really but both not very well suited to having to do the tanking with poor armor and the charioteer having a, a very small amount of hit points only 1050 meaning that a couple of tanks on the enemy team well one of them especially the FE 215B183 can one-shot you pretty much about 60 or 70% of the time if they hit your tank. So me and John are now trying to hunt down this IS-7 and we're trying to communicate about what he might be about to do. I stop here hoping that the IS-7 is going to reverse. However, seeing that he's not and also noticing that there's a, an ST-1 and an ISU-152 who was last spotted just to the northwest of me, I feel like I have to progress the pace. Now this IS-7 has 368 hit points, and so that means that I'm pretty much about a 70% chance that I'm going to kill him with that shot. Maybe 65% chance. I shut him down while John keeps his attention. We were communicating about uh, which way he was going to be facing, whether he was focusing on a certain target, and John does a great job by shutting down an E-75 on the enemy team, and then comes to assist me with an SD-1 who wants to have a go. Luckily for me, the SD-1 nearly managed to launch in a shot over that rubble but he wasn't quite able to do so he thinks about reversing to come and have a go at me but there's an isu 152 who's coming after me now 
Now, John just fired his last shot. He's got no more rounds to fire into the SD-1. But luckily, I'm able to assist him and get a hit into his lower plate. Now having secured kills on a Tier 9 and a Tier 10 Soviet heavy tank with one health and also ammo rack. Now using the mobility of the charioteer and the flexibility with the turret that this tank gets, we're able to uh, put a good shot into the ISU-152 and then the Object 140 on our team finishes him off. Now, me and John are having a, a darn good impact for our, our team here. We've picked up four kills, and in that situation, this game could have been a lot more tricky than it looked like. Thankfully now, however, it's going to be a four versus one situation against the FB215B183 on the enemy team. But hopefully, there's still a chance that we're going to be able to sneak a shot or two into him. He probably spotted me there. No, he didn't. Sixth Sense didn't go off. Didn't quite manage to get a glimpse through that gap. But as I make a hard left here, it's very likely that I'm going to spot him and he's going to spot me. I think about going th for a shot through the window. But I instead decide to come to this side of the building as I think that he's going to be aiming at John Harmon and also the T-10. Which he is, which allows us to sneak a shot into his lower plate and pull back. And from here, the FV-215B-183 is doomed as John Harmon picks up his third kill of the game on, on another Tier 10 turreted British tank destroyer. So this round was short and sweet like a lot of the games that occur in World of Tanks on the city maps. After the misplay at the beginning of the game which left us on one hit point ammo wrecked and without a repair kit, we soldiered on to get two kills and 3,000 damage on generally tanks that were higher tier than us, even securing kills on tanks that were two tiers higher than us. In fact, when we look at the post-game stats, I was very happy to pick up a Confederate and a tank sniper medal, finishing second on experience and also second on damage in this very awkward situation. And a big shout out to John who did finish on top of experience and damage in another tier 8 tank. And it wasn't just us as well. Look at this Yak Panther 2 who was able to do 2,800 damage in this tier 10 game. With us undoubtedly making the difference in this game, while very powerful tier 10 tanks such as this T-57 Heavy were only able to put one shot in. When you look at the enemy team list, however, it's their three tier 10s who are on top of the damage, with only the ST-1 putting their final tier 10 into fifth place. And so a lot of people are always asking me, how can I improve my win ratio or how can I improve my WN8? And one of the answers to that that is to have the biggest impact you possibly can irrelevant of the difficulty of the situation that's facing you. Some of the ways that lower tier tanks can take on higher tier tanks, even up to two tiers higher than you, is to play a supporting role for other vehicles on your team. Wait until the more dangerous vehicles on the enemy team are already stuck in engagements and then outflank them and try and take advantage of their more vulnerable areas. And I'm not only talking about working with your platoon mates, obviously that's a hell of a lot easier, especially if you're using some kind of voice communication. I'm talking about being aware when you see that a player on your team is likely to have maybe a one-on-one -on -one engagement that you think he might need help with. Well, try and assist him, that is free damage which you could do even if you're on one health and even if you're ammo racked. Creating engagements in World of Tanks where your enemies are ineffective and you are making your team or directly yourself more effective is one of the massive keys to victory. For me personally, I love the variety of World of Tanks. I treat each game as its own little puzzle. Maybe we have more tank destroyers than the enemy team. That means that our engagements might be at long range or more linear down passes. Am I in a medium tank or a light tank? Well, maybe I should focus this round more on vision. Are there multiple self propelled guns in the game that I'm playing? Well, I've either got a few options. One, close the distance to make the trajectory of their fire worse. Two, try and find some hard cover and poke out only when I feel it's safe. Or three, try and use some bushes to enable me to spot my opponents and keep my self-propelled guns firing while hopefully evading their vision and hiding from theirs. And what this all really boils down to is the fact that I enjoy being the underdog in World of Tanks and there's nothing more satisfying than when the underdogs come out on top. And I think one of the main pieces of advice that I would give to the World of Tanks community is that no matter how bad the situation is looking, never give up. And with enough luck and just a little bit of skill, even the smallest of tanks can change the outcome of the battle. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And if this video has sparked your interest in the Tier 8 turreted British tank destroyer, then simply click through up here or use that more info icon in the top right hand corner of your screen to see what it is capable of when it has more than one hit point 
and a fully functional ammo rack. And let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the matchmaker as it stands. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.